What's a high voltage bus? My name is Janosch. I've been building electric cars since 2018 and the concepts I will show you don't only apply to every electric car you can buy today, they also apply to these wind turbines, this little electric lawnmower. They also apply to my friend Paul's custom electric Porsche. <laughs> All right, let's look at the high voltage bus now. Um, I showed you four examples there. I showed you an actual electric bus. I showed you an electric car that my friend has built. I showed you uh, the lawnmower and I showed you a wind turbine. The reason I included the wind turbine is because it's exactly the same as an electric car, but in reverse. A car has got a three-phase electric motor, a wind turbine has got a three-phase electric generator. Even more so, if you stop your car at a stoplight, your three-phase electric motor turns into a three-phase generator, feeding energy back into the battery that you have, right? And essentially the wind turbine is the same thing, right? You've got the three-phase generator, it rotates, it feeds energy onto a DC bus, and from that DC bus, it then gets turned into alternating current that is then fed into the electrical grid, right? So the only difference there is for one, you've got a battery and for the other one, you feed it into the grid. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you about some devices that you will find on a high voltage bus. And I'm gonna talk about some concepts that are also important, right? So in an electric car, you're gonna have a battery, big plus, big minus, you know, two wires, and they go to the inverter and to the motor. There's two concepts here that are important. One is pre-charging and the other one is shielding. Pre-charging means the inverter has got capacitors in it and when you connect the battery to the inverter, there's something called an inrush current and you need to minimize that inrush current. So what happens is you end up with something called a pre-charged circuit. The pre-charged circuit um, connects them first to a resistor so the capacitors can charge themselves up like, slower and then you close the, the main contactor, then you can drive, right? So there's something called a pre-charge circuit in every electric car. You can hear the relays clicking on uh, with like a two second delay in most cars. The other one is shielding. Um, the inverter is really loud, like electrically loud. So it turns itself on and off really, really fast to drive the motor and that creates electrical noise. And you don't want that electrical noise in other parts of your system. You don't want that in your control systems. You don't want it to interfere with sensors and stuff. And what you do is as good as you can, you wrap the high voltage bus in a Faraday cage. So the uh, wires will often be covered in braided steel shielding and the devices on the bus will be built in a way that they conclude that they close the Faraday cage around the bus, right? You're gonna have a current shunt on your high voltage bus. The current shunt is essentially a sensor that tells your control system, okay, energy is flowing this way or energy is flowing that way. What you might have in a car is an AC charger, which when you plug in at home into your wall socket, that's alternating current and that needs to be rectified and turned into direct current that you can feed back into your battery. Interesting enough, there's no such thing as a, as a DC charger that doesn't exist. If you drive your car to a rapid charger in the street and you plug it in, the DC bus from your car is directly connected to the DC bus from the rapid charger. So there's no box that has got a label on it that says I'm the DC charger, that doesn't exist, right? It's not, it's not a thing in the car. Okay, and then some other concepts that you should know is the bus is floating. And that means the negative side is not connected to the chassis. Uh, you might be familiar with a 12 volt control system and in a vehicle, in a motorcycle, or in a car, or on a moped, or uh, an electric bicycle, the negative side of the control system might be connected to the chassis, right? High voltage, you don't do that. It's too dangerous, so both the plus and the minus are completely independent from the rest of the vehicle. They're completely isolated. Which brings us to the next one, uh, is isolation resistance monitoring. If they are not isolated, the car is not safe, it's not safe to touch, so it will continuously monitor itself and measure the uh, resistance between the chassis and the high voltage bus. And if that resistance gets too small, that means something might be touching or moisture might be getting in somewhere and the car refuses to start thereafter. So to recap, I taught you about the devices you will find in a, a high voltage bus. And I taught you about some concepts. The devices are, you can have a battery, you can have an inverter motor, you can have a current shunt, you can have an AC charger. The AC charger doesn't exist. I gave you some examples of systems that have a DC bus, which was the wind turbine, the high voltage, the high voltage bus bus, uh, the electric car that my friend built, and the little electric lawnmower. Concepts, um, everything about 50 volts, you can call a high voltage bus. You need a pre-charge circuit, typically the bus is floating, there's isolation resistance monitoring going on, and you want shielding. All right, 
On a very high level, that's what a high voltage bus is. I hope this helped and I hope this gives you inspiration to continue your learning. This is the high voltage bus in a nutshell. Thank you very much for watching.